kids credits and community. Tonight's topic was supposed to be about floating kids, basically anybody under 18. And uh, while we did talk about that, we ended up uh, diverting kind of kind of old school podcast how we used to do it where we'd have one topic and talk forever about other stuff too. Um, so we also talk about float credits and memberships if clients get to keep their credits afterwards. Strangely enough, Kim doesn't think they should. Can you believe that? Well, she defends herself on tonight's podcast. We also just talk about community, building community with our um, with our businesses and, and our, our float centers. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Helmbot. Helmbot is speeding up their search filter, that little search filter in the upper left-hand corner of the browser. Now, when you type in somebody's phone number, it's going to come up a lot quicker so you can find clients, which it is amazing how many ways you have to find a client besides their name. And uh, phone number is a really common one. So you just type that in and they pop up now super fast. You do need to make sure that the area code prefix is in there. But yeah, ah, it's so lovely to see Helmbot uh, just continually growing, developing, and best of all, getting faster and faster. Don't take my word for it. If you're not already using Helmbot, go to helmbot.com, schedule a tour, check it out, and make sure it's a good fit for you. It's not just for float center specific businesses anymore. It's for float centers with massage, acupuncture, yoga, classes, all that stuff. So check them out at helmbot.com and grab life by the helm. I'm going to keep saying it until they tell me not to. I love saying grab life by the helm. Grab it by the helm. And um, yes, salty sea dogs. Of course, I also want to give a shout out to the FTA. The FTA isn't just a bunch of random people that have nothing to do with what we're doing. These are people uh, within the float industry who want to support the industry. It's really cool how the community comes together in this industry. I love it. And as they say, when we work together, we can lift up the industry. And that that is absolutely true. See how you can get involved in the FTA at flotation.org. That's F-L-O-A-T-A-T-I-O-N.org. Or email them info at flotation.org for more information on them. And uh, yeah, see how you can help support the community while the FTA is supporting us. Uh, You can also participate in the FTA. So if you're already a member or if you're not and you're interested in what they're doing or want to find out more, how you can contribute to the industry, the FTA is a great way to funnel you in and give you a sense of, I don't want to be just give you a sense of purpose, but help you decide how you can help the industry and find the right committee for you or find the right group where um, you might be working more with a team or you might be given individual tasks and you can help support. So um, you can volunteer for the FTA as well. I highly recommend checking them out. Again, go to flotation.org. And uh, as as always, like I absolutely believe in the FTA. It's something we all support on the podcast and we are all members. And if, if you aren't a member, again, flotation.org is where you can sign up. Truly believe in these guys. Check them out. Also, don't forget to check out shop.artofthefloat.com where you can buy super cool floaty, nerdy float t-shirts and float media for images, video, all that jazz. And of course, patreon.com forward slash art of the float if you want to sign up for a membership and get um, sweet material each and every month for your float social media website, um, email blasts, all that stuff. All right, let's start the show. Welcome back to another episode of Art of the Float, where float centers thrive. My name is Dylan. I own the float shop in Portland, Oregon with my lovely wife, Sandra. Hey, everybody. It's Kim Hannon. I own Sukino Float Center in Salt Cave in Southern Indiana with my husband, Graham. And this is Drew from New Hampshire Float in New Hampshire. And I am really excited for tonight's topic. I can't wait to get right into it. Dylan, why don't you introduce tonight's topic and let everyone know what we're talking about. Energy. I love how you bring the energy each and every night. Yes. Um, So tonight we're talking about, well, you know what? This is going to blow you away. We're talking about floating people. Yes. And I'm going to narrow it down even a little bit more. We're talking about floating kids, people under 18. And there's a there's a wide range of what that means for somebody floating somebody under 18. And I want to I want to talk about it. It's something that we do um, at the shop. And I'm sure you guys have as well. And let's talk about float waivers. Let's talk about best practices, uh, guardian, no guardian, all that jazz. Um, let, let's dive into it. And, uh, first of all, have you guys floated kids? Not all at yeah. once here. <laughs> yeah. 
I think you know, for had... all your excitement, Drew, <laughs> I want you chomping at that microphone. I was I was ladies first in the situation, but I I also remembered a conversation we had off air, so I screwed that one up. <laughs> Right. So I'll let Kim go we'll, first because we'll, I think uh, her answer will be quick. We'll clean this all up in post. I'm sure yeah. I'll remember to. I'll Don't share mine for it. sure. Um, <laughs> we haven't floated a whole lot of children. Um, you know, our policy is that we do allow them. Um, after the parent has floated at least two or three times, they feel comfortable with the float process themselves and can make a judgment call on whether or not it would be a good idea for their kids. You know, we can't tell age is just a number really and we can't tell you know if their child is going to have a good experience can you know can get into the float tank and and not Mm. splash around all of that so (laughs) our policy is what it is and you know we do always have a conversation with somebody uh, you know if they're asking about their kids not just like are you familiar with it are you comfortable with it how many times have you floated but also just to let you know if your child is prepubescent or, or in puberty there's a solid chance they may experience stinging sensations. And so we are very upfront with that. Um, and then we let them know, like, they're welcome to come in and try it. But this is this is what our, our kind of rule is. If they're um, under the age of 12, we do ask for a parent to stay in the suite. That means that our exterior room light is going to stay on because it's motion detected. Um, and so it'll be a little bit of a different experience, but it's allowed. But my daughter has floated many times and she is now 14. She started um, floating when she was about 10. Wow. Kim, what's cool. your waiver say? Do you have a um, number on your waiver? Um, no, we don't. And, you know, okay. obviously the parent would still have to to sign for a child because they can't legally sign any uh, document on their own. But um, we don't have any kind of specific age. We have a special pass where basically, you know, we have $10 off um, the, the regular price for kids. Um, huh. And, you know, my my team members get a special deal if their kids want to come in. Um, but... You know, we just really haven't had a lot of demand for it. So there wasn't a lot of need for us to go too deep yet into anything beyond that. But I, so I'm here to learn from you guys. Yeah, well, I have I have some experience with this. So yeah. this is room to talk, Drew. Jeez. Great. Oh, Come on. I wasn't <laughs> talking enough. He's excited. Too much. <laughs> Get that enthusiasm, right, Drew. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, I, I, I was, gonna, I was gonna say that I um, like that it's not in your waiver because, yeah, anybody under eighteen, you got to have a guardian signing for it. But it, that's a conversational thing because, like you said, uh, you know, age is just a number. You don't know that where mentally that kid is at, and talking to the parents can help you establish where it's whether it's a good idea or not. And it, and it just requires a little bit of cognizance from the float center owners and the parents and having that conversation. About whether, A, they should be floating at all, setting expectations, parent or guardian in the room, all that stuff. Yeah, That is a great first step is having that conversation. I ask why. Why do you want this? Mm. Why do you want your kid to float? What do you mm. think the kid will get out of this? What's what's the reasoning for thinking this, right? But um, I did have an 11-year-old who turned 12 while he floated with me who was a little junior gymnast and very mature and uh, he was injured leading up to a big competition and floated a couple times a week leading up to that competition and the conversation was exactly what what Kim had said it was hey do you understand what this is Um, you do you understand that you're going in there to be quiet and there are other people floating so you have to um, you know, be respectful of that and understand that you're going in there to just relax and not move around and yada, yada, yada. So it, I, communication is the big, even, as I say, yada, yada, yada. The communication is the <laughs> yeah. big Skip piece over that of communication it. piece. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, I'll, let, I'll let just about anyone float, but I have had a bad experience with females under the age of like eight. Mm-hmm. I've had two bad experiences. So, so I say, though, I tell them, exactly what Kim said that they've had. And also I've since learned that um, as kids are toilet training, so what's that age? I, I don't have kids, four, five, six, somewhere around there. They're 
they can be rough. And it's not just toilet training, but as the young kids are learning how to wipe, they can be really rough and it creates the abrasions that can then sting when they get into uh, the the float water, the solution, right? right. So mm-hmm. I think that really it's great to have young kids uh, float, but I think there is a little bit of a too young. And I don't see a problem with... 12, 13, 14 year olds floating if they understand what it's about. And there are lots of mature kids and I've had a bunch of them float. And a lot of times it's for anxiety and the parent is trying to help their child with anxiety and they don't want them taking drugs. So Mm -hmm. I definitely try to work with people. I think it's great that they're exposed to it. And as long as they, again, understand, I did have one time where there were two kids for one of their birthdays who were getting in and out. And that's why... I'll use that as an example and say, if they're getting in and out and going from room to room and switching tanks and giggling, I'll ask you to leave. That's not what this is. You go into your room, you have your float and you leave, right? So um, communication, setting the expectations and, um, you know, again, finding out why. What do you think your child will gain from this? Especially if you haven't floated, why are you bringing your child in? What what caused that? Mm -hmm. So, and, and I think that also helps to learn a little more about those customers and, you you can kind of, uh, you know, guide them in a more personal way. So do they want the light on? Do they want to be in the same room? Do you want to wait? You know, I, I try to engage the parent if they're in, waiting in the lobby while their child is floating. Mm. So... Mm-hmm. I think it's great. I don't. I'm, I try not. I try not to put barriers in front of people for floating, right. and um, but we do have conversations. Definitely, yeah. I try to have blunt conversations about that. Yeah, Dylan. Before we hear yours, I do have to say. Now that I'm thinking about it, we've had some high school age student or high school age uh, guests who've come in, and in my mind, they're not kids. Um, you know. Oh, right. Yeah. So I think of that just differently, but we have had some teenagers who've come in for a lot of the reasons that you mentioned, Drew, you know, athleticism, um, you know, recovery from competitions or sports in general, and, you know, some who are there for anxiety. Um, Some just saw their parents doing it and thought it sounded cool and they're learning Mm -hmm. self-care. And that's the piece that is really awesome to see is they're watching what their parents are doing, saying, hey, what? why are you going to this float place so often? Wow. What's so special about it? Okay, cool, cool. Can I try it too? And those are the ones that I really love because then that, you know, teenager has learned a life skill. And it's just really awesome to see those folks, you know, coming in. And sometimes it is curiosity. I think for the little kids, it's often a little bit more curiosity, but there are definitely... Um, cases, I think I agree, Drew, like get them in there and, you know, teach them how to, how to do this and, and they can benefit for life. I wish I would have known about loading, um, at a much, much younger age, but Dylan, I want to hear your stories. Like how many, how many littles have you all floated? Um, I feel like we used to float more littles, but I think based off what we've talked about is we've talked Mm -hmm. parents out of bringing their younger Mm -hmm. kids in because girls in particular, Mm -hmm. a lot of stinging, a lot of pain. It's not, it's not comfortable. Um, I am curious. Have you found that with boys? Uh, Do they have that same experience? We only had one, I think, who was kind of in that prepubescent puberty starting age. Um, and didn't have any experiences that were reported, um, from him, but again, like definitely my daughter experienced it. You know, she tried to float when we first opened and it was a nightmare. Um, and we waited a while, you know, we did all the things that you would normally do to try to help prevent that stinging. Um, and then we waited a while, tried it again after the second time we were like, nope, we're going to wait a little bit longer. And then finally she came to us and said, you know, what? I really want to try again one day. And um, so I took her back in and now she's floated several times. She absolutely insists on at least 90 minutes. Um, Ah, And she, oh yeah. And she loves it right now. She's not allowed to float because she has hair dye, temporary hair dye on half of her head. And so it's like, you're giving up floating. Are you sure about doing this? And so temporarily she's, she's not floating at the moment, but I wish she could be. Letting their kids dye their hair all sorts know, of colors. Right? I can't even believe it. Uh, that, that is such an awesome story. I love that. And that she demands at least 90 minutes is so mm-hmm. cool. Uh, mm-hmm. My littles can't can't float yet. The the stinging, it's just, uh, mm-hmm. just negates it. But they're so excited by it. They think it's so yeah. cool. They even practice in the bathtub floating, you know, and it's so great. Super cool. But um, 
I have not. So while we've had teenagers float and like they're the ones guiding the parents, like I I want to try this, I want to experience this, uh, which is super cool. I will say I have not had some um, somebody regularly, somebody under eighteen regularly float with us. So Drew, you sharing that story was really cool with the the gymnast of like getting getting the recovery and the focus or whatever they were getting out of it. I think that's so awesome. I I also had a high school. I think he was a senior at the time, but he was uh, an athlete, and scholarships were on the line. You know, yeah. and he so it was. I think it was football season. He was floating during football season, cool. but. Um, you know, he was, he was under that high school pressure of trying to stay healthy enough to mm-hmm. get a scholarship somewhere, right? Yeah. That's a big deal. So yeah, I try not to prevent, um, kids from doing it, but also I do think, I don't know what the age is. Maybe it's 10, maybe it's 11. I don't know, but I do think there's a, an age where it's like, why don't you just wait a little bit? Mm-hmm. And if they want to do it, try it, right? If I can play just a little little counter, a little, I don't even know if devil's advocate is the right word, but just a little bit of counter to that is I have had kids float with their moms together in the float tank um, for about an hour, it seems like, is, is the amount of time. I don't know mm-hmm. if we've had somebody stay in the entire time, but I've been really blown away by how long they've stayed in there and um, just had really awesome experiences. I think it's a really cool thing. Um I think couples floating in general is really awesome. If you know what it's about, mm-hmm. letting go next to your partner can be really mm-hmm. beautiful and practicing that. Um, but uh, obviously like a different dynamic, but uh, you're letting the kid acclimate to this and, and feeling safer because you're right next to them as the mom, like, mm-hmm. and then both of you um, letting go, but maybe the mom's still being more aware of their kid and, and having that mm-hmm. feeling of comforting them and everything. Ah, I, I think that's awesome. I'm curious, do you guys do anything different like you mentioned the, you know, only an hour. So do you do a shorter time when you have children or do you have any other precautions or tools or anything else that you ask for? No, like, again, we're like 11 years in. So like, mm-hmm. it's all just this regimented, like we we do these transitions every mm-hmm. two hours, like it's this whole thing. So you're signing up for a 90 minute period of time. If you want to stay in there during that whole time, that's awesome. What it'll, the only thing it'll change is the conversation beforehand, yeah. guiding somebody into it and talking about the things like expectations about time where like mm-hmm. there's no requirement to stay in there for 90 minutes. And so if if that kid's timer is done at, at 30 minutes, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Like if they got something out of it and that was a cool experience, that's great. But but usually they again, especially I feel like with the mom in the room um, and, and I'm sure I don't know all the time that they're getting in or if they're sitting next to the float tank. And um, even if they've told me it's jumbled up in my head, but um, mm-hmm. they, they tend to stay in there, which is really cool. Yeah, my experience is also that they tend to stay in and as long as the phone gets turned off. Um, I, yeah, I think that's, that tends to be the big distractor, but if they shut the phone off, which I highly encourage, uh, multiple times during the introduction, I am, I, I'm not, I can't think of a time where someone got out early and said, mm-hmm. ah, I didn't like that. They right. tend to enjoy it. So, um, I think there's also something cool about it for the kids that they get to go and tell their friends they did this really weird, cool thing because it's, and it's cool because it's weird and their friends probably have never heard of it. Right. So they get to tell their friends that they did this funky thing. Sure. And I, they, definitely. They, you know, yeah. So they, then they're sending your website around and, you know, my daughter, my daughter talks about it all the time to her friends and <laughs> their friends then go tell their parents. And we've had a lot of the parents who've come in to float with us because oh, they wow. heard about it from their kid. Yeah, so she's a great marketer you know she she does that guerrilla marketing style she gets out there and (laughs) spreads it around we have lots of her teachers come to float with us no way yeah it's pretty fun and that's you know typically the gift that we give to our all of our kids teachers too is you know gift certificates to come in and they all love it but um do you guys do any special pricing for your kids or like tiered pricing or anything unique nope so (laughs) i kind of do i have a girl who floats with me who um her, she had a broken femur mm-hmm. and it like didn't take and she has to have another surgery. And I, she's in college and is just like struggling. So I came up with a special price for her, right? Mm-hmm. I, I offered that oh, to sure. her if she cool. wanted to do it regularly. Um, I, I have a special deal for $40 a float for her, nice. right? And no, like that 
doesn't exist for any. So I would do stuff like that for, Mm -hmm. for a kid who's maybe in college. Like I remember having three jobs when my dad was sick with cancer and I could, I was eating peanut butter and jelly and oatmeal. So if there's a, a kid I can help out and who wants to flow, I try to, I try to do that. Um, but there's, I don't have a flat, like, oh, you're under 16, you pay less. Mm -hmm. No, but you know, in yeah. a unique situation, I, I definitely work with people to try to get them in there to, to help them out. This is something, yep. and, and I'm, I know I'm digressing here, but we, I do tell people there, there is, um, we've never turned away somebody for price for, for not being able to afford floating. Like if, if this is something you find valuable, we will find a way to float you. Sometimes that's just a discount. Sometimes it means volunteering, uh, for people going through cancer treatment. It means donation based because we just, want you in here healing right so uh, i like that drew and sometimes and again it's just like the whole conversational thing of, of knowing yeah. your clients and-, and that's part of the community that you build that you you know you're i would say the successful float centers are the ones that care about floating and care about helping people and the money is secondary and we're really trying to impact the community and in the long run that benefits everybody and that will grow floating and that will grow our business mm-hmm. it might not be that you know, short term, uh, high financial gain, Mm -hmm. but in the long run, you're building this goodwill in your community and you're building your reputation. And if someone heard about you helping someone out, then they might refer you again to some, right. That, that goodwill and that word of mouth is how do you put a, a price on that? But before you feel like listener, before you feel like we're encouraging you to bend over backwards and go out of business helping people. You have to take care of yourself to be able to take care of other people. We all yep. three of us understand that. So uh, just know yeah. that's a part of it too. But I don't go around looking for people to help out, you know, <laughs> if, but if they come to me and we it's have funny that you conversation. Say that, Drew. I am doing that actually. And it's interesting that we've twisted this because this is something I've been actively working on this week. Um, we are starting, well, we've had what we call a pay it forward program. And oh, yeah. um we haven't done a lot with it, but basically every time we have a member who cancels their membership, um, we any remaining credits on their account are lost and we transfer those into our pay it forward program. And so we have an account that we literally are, are transferring credits over. And so we have this whole big giant bucket full of unused credits. And we huh. went round and round trying to figure out like, how do we launch this? How do we offer this to people? What's the right way? Do you just throw it out and say, I have a you know, paid for float today. If you have an opening, um, how do people qualify? Do we want them to have to qualify? Is it a burden of proof situation? Like what, what is it? And we can't come up with anything specific about what makes sense for launching this. And we might try a couple of different techniques. Um, but one that we have done is we have, uh, an option. If we end up working with a specific group, um, and tying it back to the kids, if we had a coach who came to us and said, Hey, I think this would be great for my team. I could say, you know what? we're going to help you out. We've got some, you know, some prepaid floats. We're happy to donate that to your group. And so we work with them and get those scheduled and, you know, would use our pay it program uh, for a specific group. Um, we're, we tried to do it with a VA group and we had everything arranged. We were in the par- process of getting everybody booked in. And then the coordinator found out that they could not take donations and so we had to cancel, like, we were so excited because it was the first official group Should that we were really launching this with. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, it's just a dollar. We've we've done pay what you can days, but, um, you know, this pay, pay it forward is something that we're really, hope, like, really excited to launch at some point this year. And I think, you know, what you're saying, Drew, like, it's a great opportunity to be able to help somebody um, who you who may not really be able to, to float. And so I'll come back whenever we've actually fleshed out the program and what it looks like and... Um, share, you know, what it is and how we launch it and all of that. But right now we're just in that little soft launch. If somebody comes to us and says, I can't afford it, but I would love to do this, we can do a one-off and, you know, cover them with those floats. But we're almost, we're, we're approaching our fifth year and we waited, you know, we, we gave away tons of free floats, of course, in the beginning, but um, we, we were able to stockpile enough of those now that we feel really comfortable being able to launch programs and say, you know what, these are already paid for. Let's give them out to the community. Yeah, I'm curious about that. So what does that mean when, by the way, I'm just getting her up real quick. Uh, if uh, just so you know, the show is also on YouTube. Uh, Kim is our spotlight of the week here. Uh, Kim's hair is just on fire. Go, go on to the YouTube. Check out Kim's amazing hair. Uh, come on. Uh, oh, incredible. Uh, uh, B or two. Um, 
So if somebody cancels their membership, <laughs> does that mean they're necessarily moving out of state? Or what is, if if they paid for their floats, they, they actually go away? T- they actually go that. away, yeah. So we say all of our floats are valid for two years as long as you're a member in good standing. And so before they cancel, we ask them to go ahead and schedule out all of the remaining credits. I don't care if it, you know, if you want to schedule them over the next nine months, next year, whatever, let's go ahead and schedule them. And we have some people who say, no, and you know, I don't, I don't need to come back or I don't know why they don't. Honestly, it baffles me, but we, I, I find that we often have people who just suddenly can't fit into their schedules. They've let their membership go. They've forgotten about it. We text them every month. We send emails. Like Mm -hmm. we do all the communications about it. We do calls to check in periodically, you know, all of those sorts of things, but some people are just like, nope, I'm done. I don't care about all that money that I just threw away. And, you know, some of them are 30 credits, 40 credits. Um, and so we have we literally have wow. several hundred in our account right now that are prepaid. Wow. And because we do flex membership credits, that allows them to use any of our services. So as we're doing this program, you know, we can cover any of our services, not just floating. Um, okay. But Okay. This is what I'll implement at the shop. Um we will ask them what they when they cancel. Can we donate some or all of these floats mm-hmm. to a fund? Yeah. Uh, but I'm gonna definitely say if you've paid for it, these are yours. Mm-hmm. You don't need to schedule them. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe when the expiry mm-hmm. comes up or whatever. But in general, like if you paid for it, it's yours. We'll refresh yeah. the expiry. So interesting, yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. We we want our folks to use them, and so that's why we put sure. it out there to them. And of course, if somebody came back to us and said, you know what, I canceled and I didn't have those credits, I really need a float. We're like, all right, cool. Let me transfer this back to your account. You know, I mean, we would absolutely still work with somebody. We're not going to be like, nope, you've lost him. Um, we use that more as a line to remind them to use their credits. And um, we've never had anybody come back and say that they want them after they've canceled. And so interesting. It, it's mind boggling. So, it really yeah, is. I, I, I am confused. Okay. So yes, uh, as I said at the top of the show, this is our episode on floating, uh, <laughs> youth and, uh, donation based uh, floating as well, which, um, so, so when somebody cancels for me, you, a, usually they're putting it on pause, but sometimes mm-hmm. they're like, I need to cancel. Like these are building up and I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I'd like to get through them, but I need to cancel. So if that, like, that is the regular conversation I have with my clients when they're Mm -hmm. canceling a membership. So what happens there in that conversation? Like, I'm like, hey, listen, these are getting stacked up. It's been a busy year. I'd like to use these, but I got to cancel. I can't just keep having these growing Mm -hmm. here. I can't get in that frequently. What are you going to tell? And I'm, hey, listen, I'm all over, I'm all over the country. I can't put these on the schedule. What are you going to tell me? Yeah, we always, we start by offering the hold. And so as soon as they say they can come in and say, "Okay, okay, we'll put you on hold for up to three months. Go ahead and use these credits while you're there. And when they're on hold, we're texting them um, a little bit more frequently and sending messages. We send at least two to three in that three month period. And, and, you know, specifically saying, hey, don't forget, you have these credits while you're on hold and your next billing date is this date. Mm -hmm. Um, Reminding them again, your hold comes off on this day. And so we can have a conversation. And then that's kind of like a trial period for them to see if it's really important or not. And most people at that point, if they're not coming in, they're never coming in. You know, it's never going to be a priority. Um, so, you know, I, I went back and forth around it because I'm kind of mindset wise. I agree. Like if you paid for it, it's yours. But at the same time, if you paid for gym credits, they're not going to let you use those six months after you cancel, you know, um, it, it just doesn't work that way. And for us as a business, that is kind of a huge liability to have hundreds of members with hundreds of credits (laughs) that aren't being (laughs) used. And they're just sitting out there. If we ever decided to sell the business, I mean, immediately that could sink us by tens of thousands of dollars in our, you know, asking price. So um, I I kind of did the pros and cons list and looked at it from every angle and ultimately decided like, this is what we're going to say, how we're going to say it. And then, you know, what we enforce in our system super cool cancels it. But then of course we have the ability to go back later and, and just be like, you know what? We were glad you remember with us for so long. You lost this many credits. We rolled them over. We're happy to roll some more back to you. Um, but nobody's ever done it yet. So, wow. And yeah. I'd ask Drew for for his input, but I know he's a free balling, no memberships kind of guy. So I'm sure this hasn't come <laughs> up for him. <laughs> no, I get. I let people keep their. I'm. I'm a. You pay for it. You can use it. Type of person. And if they don't use it, and it there's a year expiration date on it. So it'll fall off eventually. Mm -hmm. And I've definitely had people come back like late, way later 
and use a float credit that they had in their account that, nice. you know, maybe it's been a year or two years and they, it gets them back. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> if people are letting you do that, then more power to yeah. you. But I've, I also, I've also don't think done... I would get away with that at my float shop with the people that come there. They'd be like, what? Well, you're just going to take it from me. I think I'd get bad reviews mm-hmm. for that. So yeah. I'm very flexible about it. And also mm-hmm. if there is an expiration and they call after that, I will let them float. If you yeah. paid me money and you come back, I'll think it's weird if you came back five years later and say you had a float credit, <laughs> oh, but I'll sure. give it to you. Yeah. I'll yeah. judge you for doing that, but I'll give it to you. And that's pretty you much our, our, you know, if we look at somebody's account, we always make a note, you know, of what day they canceled and how many credits they had remaining. And we make a note that we transferred those to our pay it forward account, but making a note that we had mm-hmm. 20 credits remaining at cancellation. So if somebody ever does come back in and ask for that, we're happy to, you know, still honor that and give it back to them. What I've also done, though, is for especially for those folks who used to float with us a lot, if they canceled their membership during downtimes, I'll send out what we call miss you credits. And we'll just put a free uh, free session on somebody's account and send them a message that says, hey, we were just thinking about you. Here's a free float coming in to see us by X date. Um, and, you know, we've had a couple of folks who come in and just said, you know what, I have missed you guys. Thanks for doing this. And sometimes they come back in again. Sometimes they don't. But it's nice to just have that option. And, you know, we we use it as, OK, you paid for it. You're not going to use it anymore. Let's give it to the community. I think that's fascinating and cool. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it takes a special person to pull that off too, without getting the one star reviews. <laughs> as, as that's interesting. Yeah. Um, before we go, I do want to just circle back uh, to the, the floating kids part, which I just want to ask if there's anything else you guys want to share. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to share one quick thing, which is uh, one kind of downside potential that I've experienced, I think is similar to Drew's, which is, the amount of respect they give can really be like from I'm going to fold all the laundry and just make sure everything is perfect here to it seems like a wet dog was left in the room and there's salt water crystals dripping from the sink. Like, how did this much water get on every excuse me, water solution all over the walls? Like, It doesn't even make sense. What was this yes. kid doing? So I feel like that's a risk. But in the I end, wonder that with adults too sometimes. Ah, so true, true, true. Age yeah, is yeah, just yeah. a number, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But is, is there anything else that you guys want to share about floating kids uh, at your float center? I, you know, I'm just $10 I've, I've, off. <laughs> yeah, $10 right? off. We're actually, yeah, um, I'm actually getting ready to change our pricing. And I put a note on our thing uh, the other day to make sure that we had a kid's pass. And it's not published, you know, so people do have to have that conversation with us. Um, but I'm trying to pull up my list. Sorry if you're hearing me typing right now. Um, but we want to have something that's sort of there if people ask for it, mm. just in case, you know. What did I make a note of? Here we go. I've got a new float for kids um yeah it's ten dollars off ages eight to 14 at 15 and up we consider that adults because truly the cost is the same for us no matter how old they are and people don't really realize that but it's just as a courtesy um but with that said sometimes i go back and forth and maybe this summer we'll try a like kids program because yeah because i mean the summertime is our slowest time i'm actually seeing that now if you listen to podcasts like over the past few years i used to say we didn't get the summer slump well we do now um, ah, to the club. <laughs> I, I saw it last year um but maybe we'll try to do a little like kids float but I, I i don't know what that would look like um so if anybody's out there listening please share with us i'd love to hear if you've got a successful program in place and you know maybe we can come back bring them on the show and talk about it again sometime uh, speaking of which, um, the fans of the show, the people who are listening regularly, I, we've never had like a name for the people who are into the show. And I, I think uh, the uh, Sea Dogs, Sea Dogs is definitely the name of our fans. They're the uh, Sea Dogs. Dylan didn't run that by us, just so everyone knows. <laughs> just, ah, hmm. Because they're salty, yeah. the salty Sea Dogs. But you don't say the salty part. It's just the Sea Dogs. It's great. It's great. We're running with it. Send it to the presses. Truman I hope you're watching marinate. this on YouTube right now just to see the faces here. <laughs> okay. Run it past mm. the co-host before announcing on the show. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll put okay. that in the show notes for you, Dylan. The salty sea dogs. They're our greatest fans. No? Okay. 
Maybe, maybe um, another we're day. gonna keep working workshopping that for another five years or however long this <laughs> podcast has been in existence longer i don't know okay you know, oh no dylan you said five years that's perfect because five okay. years ago to get today it showed up in my memories five years ago today i finished listening to the first 127 episodes of the art of the float crazy <laughs> five years ago today that's awesome and now that's a lot we're, of episodes. That's a yeah, lot of and episodes. now we're at over what two seventy something. So we're in our two yeah, seventies right now. Seventy six, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty Whoa. cool. It's a lot of content. Um, it's a lot of value, lot of and we're always so laser focused. It's just pure value. It's fantastic. <laughs> Kids, <laughs> float them. <laughs> the, yeah. the one good thing is nothing's changed because. I used to tell people, you know, you have to listen to the whole episode because the title doesn't necessarily mean that's what they talked about. And that was with the old host. That was, and it continues today. I feel like we've, we've improved that a lot, but, uh, Aside from yeah. tonight, of course. Yeah, tonight, tonight's a very it's rare a double, exception. It's a double episode. Yeah, tri- exactly. Double your content half the time. It's a <laughs> quick episode, too. It is. Um, uh, nice so job. does that mean? So does that mean we're it's six to seven years, six and a half years? I'm trying to think of weekly well, episode. Math. 2015. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Well, Lord. I yeah. Eight years, Dylan. No, 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 no. That can't be right. That it's got to be like. That's insane. Wow. That's Wasn't it 2015? Time has passed. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah. Weird. Okay. Wow. Well, I don't want to keep talking about that. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> Just means we got old. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of old, it's my husband's birthday up. today. Oh, yeah. So How old did he turn? Happy we birthday, that on the podcast. He's, yeah. He's, he's a... <laughs> Cute little old man turning 47 today. So what? happy birthday, husband. Happy yeah. birthday, happy husband. Birthday. Um, are you yeah. serious? He's not 47 years old. He's 47. Wow. Yeah. All right. Wow. He's doing yeah. something right. Good for him. He... Um, for to uh, No, nah, I won't even say it. Never mind. Out, <laughs> We're still outdated, recording. Not... We're still recording. Don't no, say that, it. That Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like a record, no record. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, so... Um, on that note, because we're clearly going off the rails. Happy birthday, Graham. Happy 47. And um, sorry, I was just thinking about what he did for his birthday today. He's doing chuckling. <laughs> I'll save that for Kim's social media. Um, but uh, happy ber- happy birthday to Graham. Thank you to my co-hosts, Drew and Kim. Oh, I should announce Gloria's not going to be able to make it tonight. I'm sure she'll be with us again very soon. I think she's out holiday. She's not even working hard this time. Usually there's like really busy stuff she's doing. Yeah. She's just out having fun without the us. Beach not cool. Hawaii. She should have zoomed in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Um, let's see here. Thanks to Olga for maybe producing tonight's episode. Yes, thank you, Olga, for producing our episode and thanks to our sponsors helmbot thanks to the fta and thanks to mindful solutions that's mindful with two l's mindful.solutions if you want to search that in your old uh, search browser there or in your your earl and um thanks for supporting us on patreon um art of the float Dot com. No, excuse me. I'm sorry. Patreon.com forward slash Art of the Float. If you want to check out uh, the social media content, we can deliver to you uh, float photography, float videos, and uh, blog posts, some some real cool stuff we can uh, load you up with. Um, and uh, check out shop.artofthefloat.com. Um, oh, including this shirt uh, that is designed by Flux. Uh, there are some really cool shirts on there that uh, you should check out, but also uh, video testimonials and other things you can use for your social media. And uh, thanks to our thanks to Deepest Darkest for our theme song. And I think that's it. Till next time. We'll see you next time, you salty sea dogs. Yar. It's finalized. It's that's it. <laughs> he, did, he didn't discuss that with us. I'm cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs>
are. Tis not far over thar.